Let's do this. Let's just go in here. All right, guys, we're joining in from where we left off in the last one there, which was the uh, upgrade to the R200 diff. Now we're moving on to the drive shafts. Um, the ones I was looking at there that came with it, when I did my bit of research, they're the tripod ones, and apparently they're not near strong enough for what I want to do. So I went online and got a pair of uh, Z31. Uh, they're meant to be turbo, but these ones look like the turbo ones, even though they're not even called out that way. So we're waiting for them to come in the post. Um, but between now and then, what I can do is I can adapt the uh, flanges that are actually on the stub axles down below. So these are the uh, half shafts that came with the, uh, the R200 diff that I had. If you look at the inside, they're this kind of setup with the three uh, roller bearings that kind of go up along slots inside there. So apparently they're not strong enough for my needs. So I'll show you a little image of the ones I'm looking at. We'll have to see if they actually come in the post now next. The guy I was supposed to send it two weeks ago sent me a tracking number and all has stopped all of a sudden. So uh, yeah, they might be even coming. But I'm gonna work ahead with what I have here anyway. So this is the uh, flange that's uh, connected to the stub axle on the left hand side. Uh, I'm just gonna go now and show you how to take off the one uh, on the right hand side. Uh, it's fairly easy once you uh, take a few little uh, small steps. Other than that, it's a pain in the arse. So this is the little stub. If you look in there, you can actually see the bolt has got a couple of flat faces. So we need to get a Dremel there and kind of weaken them, tap them out. And then uh, we need to untorque this bolt. Uh, I have no wheel attached to it, as you can see. So I'll have to kind of lock it down. But, uh, we'll get in with the Dremel first and see how we get on. To get this bolt opened, it's jacked on there nice and tight. I had no uh, drum brake attached up, no wheel. So what I'm gonna have to do is just gonna use a couple of laws of levers to go my way. So the first thing I've done is stuck the crowbar in here and I have a jack on this side and I'm gonna jack that up until the car starts to lift. And then I need to get down here and try and see if I can pull that up and get the uh, bolt to break free. Let's give it a shot. No, There is our flange uh, removed from the end of the stub axle. Uh, now, when you actually go measure these up, you can actually even see there that this is not square. The hole, so these bolt holes will all be symmetrical, but the plate itself is not. A lot of the uh, kits you see online that will actually allow you to adapt this up to uh, take the uh, Turbo uh, Z31 shaft. will just allow you to kind of put that in there sloppily uh, with no accuracy. And if you weld it in there, it's not going to be centered on the, the approach I'm going to go with is I'm going to cut a hole out of the plate, put a steel plate and weld into position up here. And then when it's on, I'm going to use that as the center point on the lid to cut a perfect circle around here and put in the four new holes. So you know everything's going to be uh, hub centric on it. So uh, I think we'll start by marking out a plate for ourselves. Now, it's after hours on a Friday night. I don't have any steel, so I'm just going to cut a bit of steel out of it, or RSJ that I have in the yard there. Um, the real strength of this is going to come with the fact that it's all going to be in line with this flange here, the 6mm plate. So uh, whatever it gets uh, transferred through the torque will go directly in line with this current plate that's here. So uh, I think I should see no problem with uh, using a 6mm plate just directly in line with this. Right, cut up my lovely brand new piece of uh, steel. Lovely and clean, so I'm just gonna go and mark in the uh, rough center of that. Use a bit of gal spray. Uh, I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little bit outside that line so that uh, my other piece will fit down nice and tight into it, and then um, the weld can fill right down to the, the hole so it'll actually be a solid piece of steel from one to the other. Here's our plate. The plate is. Uh, we have a kind of a chamfer back here on the inside and out, cleaned off the surfaces, 
and this should fit in here now. She does. Oh, actually, if you look closely at that, train now you can actually see that that is not a rectangle in any way at all. Off down in this corner. So it's like that these parts have just been chomped off, lent a flat, and then basically the bore and the hole have been put on it, but the outsides are nothing to do with, any, with each other. Uh, it's only the holes that are punched into it that are uh, important. So I'll just it fits in there now. So now what I need to do is clamp that guy down and that guy down onto a plate to keep it all flat and run a weld around. And then I have it over this side, I'll run a weld around to here. And then I will turn that flat and uh, then we can put in our cut to create the disc with the four holes then after it. And we'll know everything then will be concentric to that shaft uh, bearing uh, piece here. So just before we weld these together here, um, I backed off all the corners on um, the, uh, the face here, just so that the well has a nice little pool uh, area to fall down into. I did the same on the, uh, the adjacent maiden plate as well. So uh, it'll be easier for the well just to kind of go around to fill in that spot. So there she goes, welded up. Now, uh, when we put that in the uh, uh, lathe, we're just gonna turn off this whole face flat, flush with this here. So if there's any kind of discrepancies in this, it'll show up. It's not gonna be the end of the world, as long as this flange here is pressing flat against the majority of uh, the part it's made into, and then it's gonna be catching on four corners out here with four bolts. So, looks good so far. Now let's go and do the other one. Here we go. Two are now welded, and the bottoms are relatively flat. They are scally hot, as you can imagine. Alright, I just uh, cut off the corners of them so when they're sticking on the later, it's going to be this giant mass of material spinning out so crazy. Uh, but between now and then, we can uh, get the diameter of these, get them turned back, and get them flushed. Alright, guys, good news and bad news. So uh, the drive shafts arrived, and um, I kind of, first thing I noticed was that there's a little step out here, so I was like, oh shit, that's uh, not going to work well with my layout. And then I uh, had a proper look at it and I realized, holy crap, these are way, way bigger than the other ones I was kind of using as a baseline. The other shafts that came with the car, the outside um, part of the flange was about 105 mil. These are 135 mil. And guess who <laughs> packed the plate to a little bit less than 135 mil? So I've just uh, rendered my work um, a little bit useless. I think what I'm going to have to do is get a couple of flanges made up for this. Um, another thing as well I noticed is that the old one that I was basing off had a 6mm uh, plate here. But when you look at these, these are 8. So what I'm going to have to do now is take a little step back. I'm probably going to pair these back to the diameter of this step here. And then get a, a flange made for the outside and weld, a ring, weld it on like a, a ring from the outside. That way it'll have that proper step here. Alright fucks, I got a... The angle grinded out and I ground that back to about 90 uh, millimeter diameter uh, just with the grinder and the, the mop disc. Uh, I'll get these turned back down to 87. That basically means a little line up with the, uh, the little boss that's on the end of this. And then I'm going to get a uh, plate to match this profile up here. Or maybe I might just keep it as a ring just for strength to uh, attach to this kind of like a collar and weld it from the outside so ended up not being as tasty a job as I had hoped but uh should be very very effective anyway so I measured the depth here on the vernier and it came in around uh, 2.5 I'm going to give it a 3 mil just to give it a 0.5 mil clearance so the way my plate will be set up will be in 3 mil here and then it'll come out the thickness of that which is 6 mil and then it'll be just thicker than this by one mil. So it'll be 10 mil plate I'll be using as this flange component here. And that's eight mil that's on that. So uh, it should be uh, more than enough to handle the load. So eventually I have gotten the rings. It's been a couple of weeks, um, but they're perfect. So I basically matched them up with the uh, drive shaft. And they fit down nicely in there, line up spot on with the holes and I'm going to leave all the material on the outside here so that I'm not going to risk uh, weakening the assembly that's going to be one continuous ring that way there's no uh, uh, levers that are going to be introduced by me cutting this profile 
the ring is just going to transmit the power directly through. So I think it'll be uh, best and safest to do that way. So uh, one of the things I did in prep prep for the well is I've actually kind of countersunk in the sides of these two edges here. Just so that when they're sitting into each other, we're kind of penetrating, getting down close to halfway through this plate here. So that should give us uh, some benefits of strength anyway. All right, guys, there's a lot going on here. Uh, I'll give you a kind of a rundown of what we have. So, I'm going to get our ring here, and then we have our four millimeter plate, and then that's going to sit on top of this here. And what that does, it just basically allows the whole lot to be flush um, at the top. And then there was a little bit of play of this rattling around in here. So, I put in these little shims so that that is now centered on the uh, other plate. We've offset these holes to be 45 degrees. Well, it's not quite 45 because those those are kind of paired up on each side, but we can split the difference so that this is basically, um, these outside holes are kind of lined up halfway between these two. And then we've clamped the hole off from above. I have to use this plate here because the clamp is over a hole and that squeezes everything down. So what you have here is that been pinned in all four corners, should stop warping. Um, this is pinned down on top of the 4mm plate which is pinned down on top of that. So the whole lot should be sandwiched in theory to allow it to weld uh, nice and level. So it uh, looks good, I'm happy with it. Um, if I was a real stickler, if I wanted to go and put that back in the lathe and just shave off the outside of this afterwards we could do that but I, don't, I think that would be just pure overkill. So what we can do now is we can tack this in place here and then when the uh, tacks are in place uh, we can go for a well, remove these little shims and the whole lot. So, uh, looks good. So that's one ring done. Um, I kind of broke the wells up into sections as you can see there, just so that I wasn't going to introduce any uh, ring warpage on it. Um, for the far side, you can see that it's pretty okay, just a little bit of a clean up. Okay, so this is one of the uh, new drive shafts that I got there, this is off the, uh, the Z31. Um, it didn't say turbo on the ad, but uh, I think the turbo ones have the uh, the uh, inbuilt. Uh, you'll actually notice there that the boot is just a circle right here. If you look at the uh, ones that came with this, that came off the block. You can see that they have this kind of uh, tripod uh, indent here and here and here. So they're apparently the weaker ones. I went starting with these here, but uh, quickly learned that uh, that wasn't the way to go. So went off and got a second hand one of these. Um, you can see there that they're legit. You don't have the tripod set up and the, uh, the whole lot needs to be changed out. You can see the boots here are doing a little leaking. So we'll take them off. I, mean, I just want to disassemble it. One of the key things I need to do here as well is I need to invert the uh, mechanism in here. That's going to actually shorten the, the length of the shaft just uh, a little bit, enough there that it doesn't bind when you lower the suspensions on this. So we're just going to strip these down and have a look inside and see what way we lie, okay? Okay, you can see in there we got a little circlip. The arrow's point to there now. Uh, so we're going to take that off and then this should all slide out in theory. And uh, you should be able to just change this cage in reverse then to do the other side. We're just going to remove it out now and see how, how we look inside. Clip is out of there. And this cage then in theory should just slide off. So hopefully it's not bound on there too hard. And it is a little bit. So I'll have to get this back down and then tap it from behind. All right, so the cage is out. And the theory is that you actually are able to flip this over the other way it's here. And it'd give you probably a good 15 millimeters extra length. So I always find this a very, very awkward part here. So this is uh, slid up here. As far as I know, there's like a little ring inside here that kind of catches on everything. So if you uh, shift that off over to the right there, you can actually see the collar that's actually um, catching onto the splines. So, Kind of using that as an impact point without hitting any of the bearing or the rail or anything. 
Now she comes. So that's the little ring that catches onto it there. Um, on the other side it's a circlip, on this side it's a ring, so it just basically presses in and clips that. So uh, that is now out. So, shaft is off now. It's both parts of the metal are all kind of rough looking, so I'm gonna give the wire brush down and uh, see if I'll paint in this bit. Doesn't look too bad. Most of the uh, damage was actually just dirt on it. Actually, uh, the shaft itself was fine. So I'm gonna give that a prime and a paint up there so that when we put it back together, it looks nice and new. Okay, next one might be a bit awkward. Uh, it's got all this dirt here. That part of the shaft would be exposed. I want them to look like new. TV joints themselves are perfect, but uh, they look crap. So let's just clean it up. So I put uh, an old rubber glove down around the bottom here to stop any dirt getting down inside. And uh, we're just gonna give this a little light rub of the brush and see how it cleans off. So I've that all cleaned back there. Looks like there's some sort of a galvanized or bright steel finish on this. Um, I'll never get able to get back to that again. So I'm just going to paint this with a bit of um, zinc primer and um, uh, paint it black and you'll never know the difference. And then last but not least, uh, the part that's going to match up to our flange. Um, this is going to need a good sanding back here. Kind of a green finisher, which I don't understand, but uh, look, when we start sanding it, we'll have a look at it. All the grease is being uh, scooped off from the inside. So we'll clean this down, brush it, degrease it, get ready for spraying, and uh, it should look good then. Here you go, that's that all cleaned up. So we'll give that a little bit of a spray. Uh, dry off and get painted as well. Okay, all my pa parts are zinc coated now, and I'm gonna just leave them there for uh, a few hours and then we'll paint them black, and uh, then we can start the reassembly process uh, hopefully tomorrow. So these are the uh, two rubber boots that came off uh, the drive shafts, and uh, uh, three out of four were looking good, but to be honest, it's only a matter of time before they uh, kind of give up. So I went off and bought some more. Uh, I kind of just got them measured off. This one is from a company called Shaftec. The model is BK78. I think that's the one with the uh, up to 90 mil uh, diameter here. I think that was 25, even though it looks a little bit bigger now. And the other was BK45. And this had a slightly smaller diameter. I think what I had to make sure was that they were long enough that way which this is they're quite flexible so i don't see any issues there right so we're going to start assembling it in reverse of what we did before so we know that there's a little clip on this end and that was onto the part of the shaft where you couldn't access it from here to take off the third lip so that's just basically tapped on in there this uh, little clip here as you can see um is quite loose and it's just binding up with the splines on the inside and I have no way of controlling it, so I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to use a cable tie, put it around the clip, and get it um, squeezed in. And then hopefully, I'll be able to kind of push it down over the splines, and this will just slide off. It's the theory, anyway. So, snip off any excess. So, threads are just lining up there. I'm going to come in now and just give it one quick slap down. Now we just need to pull that fella up out of there. Cut him off. Quick snap. Drive it home. You heard it snap in there, so you know it's in good. So I just have to pop it out with a screwdriver over that. And as you can feel, this is slightly looser than I would need. But uh, we'll bring it down to its this. Yes, that actually looks really, really, really good. Looks like it's Medford. So before we go messing around anywhere else, I want to get a clip around here. You just keep pressing this in until it kind of gets a nice little grip on it and then you squeeze that part there. So all I'm going to use here is just a, a vice grips. And I'm going to just tighten it on. So we got our 
second clip. Okay, one side looking spanking brand new. Look at that, it's beautiful. All right, let's do the other side. This one's a bit, a lot smaller, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get it over here. So I'll probably just spend a little bit of time doing this off screen. This is our cage. And the reason you flip this is to make the drive shaft 15 mil shorter. And uh, that is to uh, stop the suspension binding, apparently. Um, we won't really, really know until I actually put it in to see if this is uh, confirmed. I'd like to see things myself before making a decision, not just to read everything off the internet and believe it. So uh, I'm sure there's plenty of guys out there that will confirm it for me. So now we just need to see about getting our cage on. Now, the way this is orientated, as I explained earlier, is this is set here and it's quite recessed. If you flip this, it's going to essentially move it in here. So instead of being out uh, with the, the cup facing outwards, the cup is now going to face inwards, uh, essentially making the uh, drive shaft shorter. Okay, so now we can actually see the groove for our start clip. Okay, so our cage is bottomed out. Now we just need to get our little start clip on. So it's going to go on here, get run onto the end. So here's one I painted already. This one has a wire on the inside here, and it's like it stops the um, the uh, race from popping out too far. Uh, this kind of came out by itself, so I'm gonna hope that it just pops back in over it again. So this will be an experiment. Yeah, it's fighting. So I might pop out the ring, slide it down, pop the ring back on from the far side. And here, you know, this should just slide on a bit easier than before. Yep. So that kind of goes down here. And I go back in. And I'm going to put back on the clip on the little groove on the inside here. Just makes life a little bit easier. Hopefully it goes in as easy as it came out. Yep. Just pop straight back in. So that's our cage now inverted. As you can see here, that the drive shaft is now kind of pointing out um, to the end. So you might not actually get the full uh, 15 mil or whatever it is that's there because that's going to start popping the plate out at the end. Now I have given a little bit of space on the inside of my uh, axle stub ends uh, here, so uh, I might get some gain off it. But every tiny little bit helps. So let's pull on the boot now next. Okay, so uh, the whole is assembled, uh, looks nice and tasty. So we're gonna look at putting on our stub axle with the uh, modified flange on it now and uh, seeing if this actually fits in. The one thing I need to double check is on the R200 diff, one is long and one is short. So I have to make sure that I put the right one on the right side and then we can get to see if this actually fits in or not. So before I go fitting in um, this, I want to make sure it's on the left or the right hand side. The longer and the shorter one, you can see here that there's probably about nearly 10 mil in the difference of one to the other. Uh, that's including this little kind of collar here. So I went off and measured uh, each side and confirmed which one was longer. And this looks like it's the, uh, the right hand side shaft. Uh, this is the left hand side shaft. Um, I just did that by going in and just measuring the depth of that on each side. So, so this is the hub that I'm putting on now. And I'll say the hub then is like a washer and a nut. Now, as you can remember, I cut into these nuts. So I'm hoping that maybe if I flip these over and have one from the other side, that the cuts or the little tabs I knocked in don't line up exactly where they were before. And I get through using them. And uh, that saves me having to come back to this project another day. So we'll stick in our little hub fella now. So you can 
see that the tabs from the previous torque didn't line up with the, the flats. So I can actually tap them in now and reuse this nut. So just by 50-50 chance, uh, I did use the opposite nut. So just gonna double check my torque settings on that and uh, then we can uh, tap them in and tighten her up and we're good to go. Here we go. See how much of a gap I have there. And that's when she maxes out. So you can see that there is actually contact there between the anti-roll bar and the uh, wider hub of the new drive shaft. So I have to see does that pull back when the uh, car gets jacked off as possible. So I'll have a look. Right, a couple of things that uh, I didn't see being called out in any forums, not unless I didn't read them enough, but uh, Number one is the anti-roll bar seems to be in quite far back, which means that the uh, the boot of the CV is actually pressing up against this. Now I tried to see if I could jack this up without any weight in it. Um, the whole car just wants to lift off the um, axle stand. Um, don't want that. So I started looking at it again and then realized that the cap that I had just put on was pressing against the bolt in the middle. So even if I wanted to get it in, I couldn't. Another option now would be to flip that the other way and that will allow it to clear the bolt. Now, I think I've seen a couple of guys say that they ground off that, but we're only going to gain two millimeters at the most. So I don't know if this action, me flipping this over, is going to cause me to lose a little bit of depth. Probably not. Um, when you lose from one, you might gain from the other. So I'm going to cap, put this cap back on inside out. Uh, that basically means it'll pop over that bolt and then see if the assembly will actually close in and see how much contact we're making there. So I've flattened the clip and it seems to be giving me a little bit of clearance that I'm looking for. Uh, but there's a little bit of contact between the anti roll um, uh, drop link and just the cap that's on top there. So I think for now we're going to carry on. So we definitely have the CVs installed. We're happy with that. Um, we just need to uh, assess this little point here once the uh, the weight of the car comes down on top of it. So uh, yeah, I think 99% uh, of the way there. Quite happy with that. All right, folks, that's all for this episode. Happy days. Those drive shafts are safely in. We'll come back and have a look at them uh, at a later date once the uh, weight is on the car, just to make sure that there's no interference at that joint. Coming up next week, we're going to be uh, joining a four-speed bell house off one of these uh, onto the five-speed gearbox off an S14. We want to try and up the uh, the power rate of this car to maybe up to about 400 brake horsepower, all going well. And uh, we want that gearbox in there to be able to handle that power. And guys, as always, any likes or subscribes you can send my way, I'd greatly appreciate that. So long for now. Bye bye.